Welcome back everyone. This is the State of the Nation. Before the break, we spoke about how several big corporates in Sri Lanka continue to deny the Sri Lankan population a better economy by hiding their profits or funds overseas to evade volatility in this country. I understand to a certain extent why they do it. Still, the question that I have and I'm asking tonight is whether is it ethical and fair for the people of this country, especially when there's a severe economic crisis. And if they decide to bring that money back into this country, which they should, would it have helped to omit a full-blown financial crisis? So as the people's representatives, what can the government do? To understand uh, where the government stands, I'm now joined by uh, Justice Minister, Dr. Vijayadasa Rajapaksa, Minister, good to see you. And welcome to the program. Uh, you revealed in the House that over $53 billion are yet out there, uh, uh, yet the non-patriation of export earnings is not being exposed and told to the Sri Lankan people by mainstream media and lots of uh, you know mediums. How come, Minister, this era lasted for this long, undetected by the authorities? Mahesh, this is a question that should be asked not only by you, by each and every Sri Lankan citizen for the reason that all these earnings are hard-earned money of our people, our resources, our people's labour. Then investors have made all these arrangements for the exports. We appreciate investors because the investors are the backbone of our economy. But at the same time, every uh, businessman, every exporter that who are making use of the service of our people, our resources, also have a duty, reciprocal duty, the amount that should be uh, repatriated or that is to be brought to the, our motherland should be brought here. That is the money that belongs to this country. What has been going on for more than 12 to 13 years, not really it was not undetected. In fact, that there is a dereliction of duty uh, by the central bank authorities, not only to monitor, to implement the laws of this country. Indeed, uh, Minister, what laws are you proposing to uh, uh, to basically curb the non-patriation of earnings. Countries like India have uh, policies uh, in place to ensure that the money comes back to, into the country. I think uh, around 100% should come into the uh, country. That's, that's what their law says, but uh, I'm not sure about it. So how come we are lagging on this? In fact, that our Exchange Control Act uh, was working quite nicely. It was not a lacuna in law. It was a question of implementation. The governor successively since 2005 have failed to perform their duty. In addition to that, there were too many interference by the politicians. The central bank is an independent institution. When the law was enacted, the lawmakers did not expect that political stooges will be appointed as the governors of the central bank. These two just have failed in their duty and they are, they are the people who ruin this economy. Uh, in addition to that, in 2017, there was a new law replaced uh, by the, uh, to the, instead of the old uh, Exchange Control Act, that was the law introduced Foreign Exchange Act, where the proper control part was missing. That also helped to increase that large number of, uh, large amount of money which is due to us being retained in other countries. So far, none of the members in the business community or among the exporters had challenged or question the validity of the report that was issued by the uh, Global Integrity Report, whereas that they have disclosed during last 12 years, 
that they had retained 53.5 billion in overseas, but that is not the accurate amount. The accurate amount is much more that may be the amount that they could have traced. Absolutely. Uh, Minister, uh, very quickly, through the grapevine, I have heard that uh, there have been countless conversations between the top tier business community and the government requesting them to bring their earnings back to Sri Lanka. Yet, in all those instances, um, they have threatened to pull their businesses out of the country. Therefore, the government has stayed silent. Will that be the same case in the future under this current administration? That won't be the same for the reason that the, that the circumstances for them to retain that dues in overseas, uh, there were several reasons. One thing was that, they, that the grip of control in foreign exchange had been you know, completely given up by the central bank in the first place. Secondly, the stringent law was you know, uh, the made uh, rather uh, flexible, uh, allowing them to keep the money in other uh, jurisdiction. The thirdly, they also had a uh, very big doubt uh, about the, uh, the rulers of this country. In short, that they had lost the confidence of our governance system. And there had been many reasons, contributory factors, but our target is not to go behind them. But first, we must understand as to how it happened. Secondly, to appeal all our investors, exporters, that they must be paid to this country by keeping their money that nobody will, in this country will be benefited. They might be thinking that will be benefited for their, for their families. Maybe for a few years after that, you know that Sri Lankan will lose all this Sri Lankan legitimately earned money. That dollars means, means nothing. Those are, you know, the sweat and blood of our innocent people. Indeed, uh, Minister, we have to leave it at that. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Dr. Vijay Dasa Rajpaksa, the Minister of Justice. We'll be right back.